are we supposed to do with the banks here? On the one hand, banking is one of the few businesses that actually benefits directly from higher long-term interest rates. Other hand, those rates get too high, can crush the demand for loans, something that we're now seeing at least with home mortgages. So maybe we want a bank that doesn't have that much in the way of residential real estate exposure like that. Take City Nat, City National, CYN. It's a boutique business bank. It's based in Los Angeles. Substantial wealth management division caters to real high rollers. City National is extremely well run. The company's most recent quarter, which it reported in mid-July, it was terrific. I mean, coming in is substantially better than expected. Remember, this is a bank stock. Not many did that. Now, the stock has rallied over 36% since we last spoke to the CEO back in December. What a call. Although, in the last month, it's pulled back uh, five points from its highs. Is this bank ready to rebound? Let's talk to Russell Goldsmith, the president and CEO of City National Corp., so we can learn more about what's happening here and what his company's prospects are. Mr. Goldsmith, welcome back to Man money. Hey, Jim. Well, it's great good to, to see you. you. First of all, congratulations on that big run because a lot of the other banks have kind of been stalled. Your bank is seeing that loan growth, isn't it? Not necessarily the mortgage, but your bank is starting to get people who want loans. Absolutely. CNI growth, growth across the whole platform. You know, we've got a range of businesses, and, and I'm happy to say, as you point out, in the last quarter, we saw a loan demand. Part of it's our existing client base. Right. Utilization's up a bit, just a bit, right. but we're attracting new clients, which is exciting. You're also hearing and seeing something that I have felt should happen, but no other bankers talked about it. Once rates start going up, you use the word, people smell that, and they want to go to work. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, we're actually seeing people stepping up on housing. Uh, we do have a, a, a pretty substantial mortgage portfolio, about $4 billion, for our private bank clients. Right. And when people see rates are starting to move up, it's like, uh-oh, I better get in. But refis definitely are slowing down, but purchases right. are still strong. But, uh, the difference may be that your clientele is such that they're not going to be crowded out. They just have to step up and pay for the $3 million house. They can't wait. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But also, and you know this, Rates are still at right. incredibly right. low mortgage levels and interest rate levels. Yeah, but you talked about housing being up 37% in California, 2.9% monthly inventory. It must be hard to find a house in California. Surprisingly, it is. Surprisingly, you haven't seen the, the sellers come forward. You'd think that, that, they, that you'd see more homes uh, on the market, but we're not seeing that. But also, the homes that are foreclosed are not the ones that customers That's not our typically. Client base. And that's yeah. who I think has really exactly. been held up. Yeah. Now, one of the things I thought was most interesting, I, trying to relate who you're your customers are. You talk about how you're getting these two bankers that are technologically oriented in Boston. Right. Isn't it true that if I were to look through all these companies that people are starting to get billions of dollars, youthful people, they, their instincts to bank with you. These, uh, I don't want to say any particular, let's, let's say Facebook-like uh, customers. In other words, people who just are newly millionaires. They're yours. Well, you know, Jim, we've over the years in California, picked up a lot of tech-oriented people and, and uh, companies, but we really haven't been a lender. So about a year ago, we decided, look, we got to step that up. We're, we focus on key industries like entertainment and real estate. So in tech, we've now got a team in Palo Alto, Boston, and here in New York. We've got a team that's just focused on lending into early stage and middle stage venture-backed companies, and we should be there. And it ties in, as you say, to our private bank. Now, when one of those companies comes public, you also get to handle some of the, the money, the income that these people might have. Sure, sure, and occasionally we even have some warrants, so it, it, it works oh, really? you know what you're doing. You've done that? Well, occasionally. All right, we've got to look for that. Now, Rochdale, obviously, this was something that boosted dramatically the amount of assets you had under management. Yeah, we picked up about $5 billion. Okay. And in fact, today is the day. Your show marks the day we officially merged City National Asset Management with Rockdale. So together, it's a $20 billion See, asset you know, management I, business. When I saw that number, $20, 20 billion, I was thinking, I mean, that's extraordinary. What were you five years ago? Oh, uh, probably half that. Did you keep any of the Rockdale analysts? Um, you know, that's a different squad. Right. They were, yeah, it's that's confusing, and that company blew up. But it, it had right. nothing to do with Rockdale right. Investments. You only took the assets. They were two right. totally, totally different companies, but with uh, the same common name. Okay. Now, when we talk about uh, what the Fed wants to do, taper, not taper, in the real world, does this have any, is this just us in the media talking? No, because look, you've seen it, you know this, the 10 years up uh, over 100 basis points since the talk got real. I think okay. hopefully we'll see it start to happen. And sometime next year or in 15, we'll see short-term rates move up. And we need to get there. The patient's got to get off these intensive antibiotics. And that's a good sign. So in other words, you're one of those people, I know that uh, Joe Kern and I were talking about this morning. If we got rid of taper, we think that it could actually be a good stock market because then we'd have real loan demand, real construction, real people going to work, more wealth. Right. It, it's an acknowledgment the economy's healthy enough that we don't need these extraordinary 
measures to keep it going. And that's also why at some point the Fed's got to get us off these unbelievably low rates. How's this uh, new New York uh, retail office doing? You know, it's exciting. I uh, hope you'll come by 44th and uh, 6th. This is ground floor, right? So, yeah. I mean, we've I been in New York 11 years, as you know, but f we decided as we build out our bank, the bank in New York is about a $3 billion bank all by itself. We've got 200 people in Manhattan, and we said it's time to bring in our high end retail, very high end. So, uh, uh, it's exciting. And the other part that's cool about it is it's our what we call core 3.0. So it's, there are no tellers, there's no counter. Uh, it's heavily oriented toward technology, private banking, wealth management, and it really is different from all the other banks you're going to see in Manhattan. In other words, uh, oh, I make an appointment when I go? No, or? no, no. Come right in, and you, somebody will come out, rip open their Microsoft Surface, bring the tablet over to you, show you what you want online banking. Sir, let me show you how it works. We'll show you this little video on the tablet. It's, it, you know, because people are changing how they use branches. Right. And we've gone out and hired the guys who designed the Apple stores to help us you have- did. Yeah, same architecture firm. So we'd have a branch that's in tune with where New Yorkers want to go. Well, one of this question, are there other cities that this can work in? Well, we are also doing it. We're opening three offices in the Bay Area, giving okay. us 12, and two here in Manhattan. So that'll be done by the end of the year, and that'll be what we do with future branches. Well, Russell, I got to tell you, you've just delivered and delivered and delivered. You're the highest quality bank. You have almost no delinquencies, so none of the problems that, that hobbled the other banks. And I just want to congratulate you. It's been just a huge win for shareholders. Well, thanks, and you made a great call for your viewers, so uh, oh, just, we appreciate it. I've known that. you for so many years in many different iterations, and you've always delivered for everybody. That's Russell Goldsmith, the president and CEO of City National Corp. Hey, guys, if you want bank exposure and you don't want to hear about all the craziness that banks have been involved in, Russell Goldsmith does not do any of the craziness. They just make you money. Stay with Kramer.